ones. <laughs> so welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. Um, we're live on Facebook and Instagram right now. And today I just wanted to um, oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> I just wanted to talk a little bit about depression. Last week we talked about anxiety. Um, so this week we're going to be talking about another very common form of mental illness, which is depression. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about some of the symptoms because I think a lot of people think they know what depression is, but don't actually realize that um, it's, it's bigger than just being sad. Um, so some of the symptoms are, well, feeling sadness, but also feeling emptiness and hopelessness, which are different things, because sometimes you don't necessarily feel like very sad, but you just feel kind of empty. You don't really want to do anything. You don't really want to be anywhere. You just feel like, um, kind of isolated, um, like you don't want to be here, but you don't want to be anywhere else, just um, empty. And I feel like that part of depression isn't talked about as much, um, but it does happen to a lot of people. Um, also, there are some less common symptoms like irritability and anger um, that can co-occur with depression um, because you're kind of more on edge um, you're more prone to being emotional overall. Um, a big one is definitely lack of energy and fatigue. Uh, that's incredibly common with depression. So if you start feeling very tired all the time, don't really want to get out of bed, that can be a sign of depression as well. Like having less interest in things that you typically enjoy or typically look forward to participating in. Having a loss of appetite, overeating and undereating. Uh, are common with depression. So it kind of just depends on uh, what your temperament is. But any fluctuation in your eating patterns can be a sign. And um, this one isn't talked about as much either, but having difficulty focusing on things or remembering things is very common with depression because it's, it's messing with your ability to focus and to be motivated. So it can affect schoolwork, it can affect you at the workplace and all those types of things. Um, and it's very, very commonly uh, associated with anxiety. They tend to co-occur. So those are some of the main symptoms of, of depression. That's what it is. So how do we cope with it? Um, there's a really, really awesome app that's completely free that I personally use myself that I love, and it's called Youper. That's Y-O-U-P-E-R, and it's awesome. It monitors de not only depression, but anxiety and bipolar. Um, and schizophrenia, I believe, as well. And it just checks in with you. Um, it asks you what your mood is, how um, what you feel, that emotion from a percentage of zero to 100%. And then it kind of walks you through the process of journaling and asking yourself questions and helping you deal with the issues that come up in life. Um, so that app is really, really awesome. Abide is another one that's really good. Abide is an app that um, is a Christian app, and it helps you um, be more positive by telling Bible stories, but also using them to help you meditate. So that uh, app is really, really cool. 
uh, therapy is always important. I will always, always, always encourage everyone to um, consider going to therapy. Um, but I understand therapy is not always cost effective. Um, but don't feel like there aren't things you can do because there are other options like coloring, um, different hobbies, like whatever you find interesting. Like, um, honestly, it, that really is up to you because some people like reading, some people like gardening, some people like painting, drawing, uh, just watching movies, anything that you enjoy. And don't feel guilty about that. Don't feel guilty about... Um, taking time to just do something that you like, even if you do have work that you still haven't finished. Um, also, make sure that you're tapping into your support system. Um, that's really, really important. I can't stress that enough because a lot of times when we're depressed, we're much more prone to isolate ourselves. And it's important that you're intentional about going out of your comfort zone and reaching out to people even when you're depressed and not thinking for them um, and assuming that they don't want to hear about what you're going through, that they don't care. Um, so make sure that you are definitely reaching out. Um, exercise is awesome for your mental health. It causes your brain to release endorphins that make you feel better. So that's a great resource. Music also um, definitely and very quickly affects your mood. So we're tempted to listen to sad music when we're sad, but I would challenge you to listen to more positive, upbeat music um, to help you feel more joyful and happier. So music definitely affects your mood. Gratitude is huge. There are so many research articles proving that consistently practicing gratitude helps with your mental health. So there are journals for this where they help you and kind of guide you uh, so that you can make sure that you're putting things in your gratitude journal that are new things instead of just the same things over and over again. But challenge yourself to at least think of three new things a day that you are grateful for. And it could be something small, like I'm grateful for brownies, or it could be something more important, like I'm grateful for my mom. So just make sure that you're being specific and consistent. Uh, gratitude is awesome. Positive affirmations. So when we are depressed, it's, it's very common to start getting down on ourselves, like, oh, I'm so lazy, I'm so needy, like, what's wrong with me, why am I like this, why won't I just get up and do the thing, um, which obviously makes it worse. And then you just go through the cycle of feeling bad and then trying to comfort yourself, usually with a negative coping strategy, and then feeling bad again. Um, so make sure that you are giving yourself positive affirmations. So just get a piece of paper and write down the things that you like and appreciate about yourself. Even if it's really difficult at first, it gets easier over time. So stick with it and try to find the things that you think are positive about yourself. And if you can't do that, then write down the things that other people have told you are positives that they've noticed within you. Um, and after you've done that for a while, you start, you start to believe it. Um, making a plan. So it's important to make a plan for how you're going to better yourself. So if I want to get good grades or if I want to progress in my career or if I want to learn a new language, um, any goal that you have, um, making a plan so that you feel productive, so that you feel like, okay, there's something to live for, there's something that I'm working towards, you know, like I'm bettering myself. Um, instead of just wallowing in, okay, I'm not where I wanna be in life, you can um, at least like take some steps. Or if your plan isn't for a goal that you have in the, in the future, but a goal that you have right now, for example, um, like every day I kind of have an idea of what I want to achieve or accomplish in that day. And your goals can be mental health related. So, okay, um, my goal is to reach out to three people in my support system today. My goal is to take my medication today. My goal is to, um, purchase an aromatherapy diffuser today so that I can start using that uh, to help with my mental health. Or deep breathing, which is uh, completely free and something that's super, super helpful. Um, like I mentioned the apps before, looking at any meditation app will have meditations around breathing. Um, 
but if you would rather not go that route, you can just look up deep breathing strategies um, and they will walk you through how to do that and how to be in the moment. Because with depression, we tend to um, focus on negative things that happened in our past or negative things that we think may happen in the future. Um, so when you're breathing, when you're meditating and you're grounding, you're focusing on where you are right now. Um, so don't be worried about the past, don't be worried about the future, but just focus on right now. And as much as possible, try to remain positive, like I said, with, with journaling or with reaching out to your support system, um, rewarding yourself. That's something that I love to do. So when I finish the workday or I finish something that I was working on, like an article or something like that, um, I make sure that I like give myself some chocolate <laughs> or I watch a movie or something like that. Um, because something that really helps with thinking positively in your mental health is giving yourself something to look forward to instead of just feeling like the days are dragging on and every day is running into the other. Um, make sure that at least once a day you do something that is for yourself, something that is taking care of yourself. Um, nature is awesome for your mental health. Um, I know outside is kind of closed right now, <laughs> but if there's any um, possible way to get outside, nature is very, very cathartic. Um, there's a lot of research behind the idea that nature um, is healing as far as mental health. Um, acceptance is incredibly important because the more that you're thinking, oh, life should be this way, or things should be like this, um, the more you're focusing on the things you can't control, um, and the more you're going to upset yourself regarding things that you can't control. So instead, um, it's better to just accept, okay, this hurtful thing happened, or I was disappointed by this. Um, and don't push it away and keep saying that it shouldn't have happened because it did. So the sooner you can accept it, the sooner you can heal from it. So accept the things that happen. And if you can change it, then change it. If you can't, then do your best to change the way that you feel about it. So if someone hurt your feelings, instead of saying, oh, like, I'm so low, like this person only hurt me because I deserve it or something like that, um, change your frame of mind and think, okay, maybe this person was just having a bad day and it's not a reflection on who I am as a person. Um, they just weren't thinking at that point. Um, so make sure that you're not taking on things that aren't yours. Don't um, own anyone else's negative behavior towards you because it's a reflection of who they are, not a reflection of who you are. Uh, visualiz visualization is awesome. So when you are um, feeling down, you can kind of picture it inside you. So if you close your eyes and picture your depression as like a, I kind of picture it as like a black like tornado. Um, and then when I'm visualizing that, I visualize it coming out um, like of my body, just like pouring out. And then I try to visualize like uh, a warm, comforting light. Instead, that brings peace. Um, so visualizing is really good for visual people. If you're a visual learner, visualizing might help you um, to kind of feel like it's, it's actually like happening actively that you are working on your mental health. Um, so these are all really great things. Um, but I want to talk about the things not to do. Um, so please, please, please do not punish yourself. Like I mentioned before, but I'm restating that because it's so, so common. Um, and don't allow other people to punish you either. Um, even if they're family, even if it's someone close to you, um, because it's important for you to remember that this is an illness, just like cancer, just like diabetes. Nobody tells those people to just stop having those illnesses. Um, so until the people around you are more aware of what depression really is, at least you yourself can remember that it's not your fault, that you didn't ask for this, that if you had the choice, you would definitely not choose to have this illness. Um, but just make sure that even though uh, you understand that it's not your fault, um, it's not anyone else's fault either. So it's still your responsibility to do your best to manage it, not to cure yourself, but to cope with it so that you can get to a place where you are able to 
live your life in the most um, liberated way possible. Um, make sure you don't isolate. I mentioned that before. Please, please, please reach out to your support system. And I know um, from personal experience that we tend to feel like we don't want to bother anyone. We don't want to bring anyone down. People have their own lives. I get that. Um, but people would much rather um, hear that, that you're sad than that you are gone um, because you felt like there was no escape or no better way. Um, and it's sad that it has to come to that, but um, that's what I have to think of when it comes to reaching out to my support system. Um, and it took a lot, a lot of people in my support system beating me over the head with that to finally believe it. Um, so make sure that you reach out to the people who say they care about you and trust that they mean it. Um, don't ruminate. So don't just keep thinking about the same thing over and over again. If something keeps coming up over and over again, it means that your brain is trying to deal with it, but somehow it doesn't see uh, the solution. So journaling is really, really good for that um, because it, it helps you to resolve things. Um, when I journal, I, I try to kind of talk to my journal <laughs> by, by explaining every detail of the situation and why it bothers me because then I'm usually able to figure out uh, where exactly the problem lies like why this keeps coming up what aspect of the situation um, is unresolved um, so journaling is really really good um, please do not harm yourself um, I know that feeling I know what that's like um, it is not a fun place to be um, but it's not productive. Take it from someone who's been there. Self-harm is not productive. It doesn't fix anything. It's, it's not helpful to punish yourself in that way. It's not going to make you less likely to do whatever bad thing you think you did. Um, it really doesn't help. It just doesn't. Um, and I can say that from firsthand experience because I know a lot of people who say it um, we kind of dismiss because we're like, you don't understand. Um, but it's really, really um, not a way to, to feel better. Um, there are so many more positive and productive ways to deal with your mental health um, than to punish yourself. So in conclusion, I just wanted to pass on some Bible verses. Um, oh, here we go. I was about to say, I played myself because my Bible's in my room. <laughs> okay, so if you have your phones um, or Bibles with you handy, dang it, never mind, my iPad is updating. So um, I'm just going to give you the verses, hold on, I'm going to just go to my Bible, I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry, friends. <laughs> okay, so the first Bible verse is Philippians 4, verse 8. And I just have a couple, but um, I think that it's really important for us to go to God with our mental illness. Um, and I know that the church has not been great about that, um, that a lot of the time uh, we are made to feel like we are uh, less than as Christians if we have mental illness and people you know, like say it's the devil or something like that. Um, and it took me a long time to like get to a place where that didn't bother me. Um, so it's okay if you still feel kind of timid um, about, about sharing this with other people in the church. Um, you can always come and talk to me. Um, but um, I think that the way that some of the people in the church have treated us is not a reflection of how God treats us um, who sh struggle with mental illness. So um, I'm just going to give you some verses that I think will kind of help guide you uh, along your journey, um, some verses that have helped me. So Philippians 4 verse 8, it says, 
Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Um, so I think that that verse is really important because it <clears throat> reminds us that we need to be very intentional about what we allow ourselves to think about. Now, we can't control what thoughts pop up, but we do control uh, what thoughts we entertain and ruminate on. That actually is in our control. So a negative thought can pop up and you make the decision to either dwell on it or do your best to replace it with a positive thought. Or if you can't do that, um, at least try to distract yourself um, by changing whatever it is that you're doing, changing your location, things like that. Um, so I love that verse. Let's go to Psalm 42, verse 11. Psalm 42, verse 11. And um, those of you who are watching, if you could send messages um, or questions, because I really want this page, um, the, this time, to be helpful to people who really want to learn more about mental illness slash mental health and who may be struggling, who want guidance, um, and to help me make it pertinent and applicable to you guys, I need to know what you guys uh, want to know. <laughs> so, um, please, please, please reach out and let me know um, if these are helpful, if if you think that you have any recommendations for um, different times or different topics, anything like that. Um, your, your input is always appreciated. Um, so Psalm 42 verse 11 says, why are you in despair, O my soul? Why have you become restless and disquieted within me. Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance. Um, so we see in the Bible, people were depressed. Like <laughs> the people who wrote the thing were depressed, which shows that um, it is not uh, a sign uh, that you are a bad Christian if you struggle with depression. Um, even the people in the Bible got sad. Uh, so it's okay to feel that way. Um, but notice what he says, hope in God and wait expectantly for him. Uh, trusting God with our past, with our present, and with our future is the way to deal with and navigate through mental illness. Um, let's go to Romans 8. 38 and 39. Now this one doesn't specifically talk about depression, but I know uh, that depression very, very commonly uh, co-occurs with low self-esteem um, and feeling like we are too far gone or too bad or too guilty for God to love us or to care about us. Um, and that is a lie. <laughs> so I, I wanted to read Romans 8, verse 38 and 39, because I feel like it's a good reminder um, when we start thinking that way. And it says, For I am convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God loves you even when you don't love yourself. Um, and I think that's beautiful. So there's a couple more verses and then we'll be done. Second Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 5. Uh, also, this is my favorite verse like of all time. <laughs> and it says, uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts and encourages us in every trouble, so that we'll be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort we receive from God. For just as Christ's sufferings are ours in abundance, so also our comfort, 
reassurance, encouragement, and consolation is abundant through Christ. It's truly more than enough to endure what we what we must. Isn't that like I just think that verse is awesome. <laughs> like, like God Himself um, goes out of His way to comfort someone like me and someone like you, and that's pretty cool. Second last one. Isaiah 51 verse 12, and it says, I, even I, am he who comforts you. Um, and that's God speaking to his people. Um, and our last one is going to be Isaiah 53 verse 3. And it says, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and pain and acquainted with grief. Um, for me, I just... I think it's really important for us to realize that even though we feel so alone when we do get into um, a season of depression, um, even God understands what we feel like. You know, like he went out of his way to become human so he can truly understand what we're going through. Um, I don't think anyone could feel more isolated than Jesus did on the cross. Um, so I think that it's important for us to understand that there are people who feel the same way we do. There are people who go through the same things that we do. Um, please don't feel like you are broken, that you are a mistake just because no one in your immediate circle is talking about the things that you are experiencing. Um, because <clears throat> the statistics show that everybody knows somebody who has mental illness. And realistically, everybody has some form of one of the million types of mental illness. <laughs> so, so please don't feel like no one has ever experienced what you're experiencing. And I'm not saying that in a dismissive way. I'm saying that in an encouraging way to feel like there are other people who have survived the things that you feel like you may not survive, um, which means that you can get through it. Um, and that you can cope with it and that you can get better. Um, and in, in verse four, it says, he has carried our sorrows and pains. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness. The punishment for our well-being fell on him and by his stripes, we are healed. Um, so I just really wanted to encourage you guys um, by helping us figure out what depression looks like, what it means, how we can cope with it, and how we can bring it to God and what Bible verses might be encouraging uh, to you. So um, with that, I'm just going to pray, and I'm going to close out this live session. I hope you will join me next Wednesday at 6 for our next Wellness Wednesday. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Dear God, I want to thank you so much for everyone who tuned into this live session today. Um, I pray for those of us around the world who, who are mental illness sufferers, um, who are just fighting every day to um, make it through the day and to better ourselves and to grow and to navigate life um, with all the responsibilities that we have while still having these internal struggles. And I thank you for the strength that you give us each day. I thank you um, that you love us more than we'll love ourselves. I thank you for your forgiveness for our sins. And I pray that you would grant us peace that passes all understanding and that the world can't take away. I pray that you would um, give us the courage to reach out to those who care about us and help us to really tap into our support system and help those who support us to um, truly be there for us and do their best to have compassion and empathy. Um, I pray that you would help us to end the stigma uh, around, around mental illness, that you would help people to understand that it's important how we treat one another. Um, and I pray that you would uplift our spirits, that you would quiet our worries, and that you would remind us of your deep, unending love. I thank you for dying, for all, dying on the cross for all our sins. And please just help us to work on our relationships with you as our number one priority. 
Thank you for answering this prayer. Amen. All right, friends. Thank you for joining. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.